Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. So we have x plus y plus z is equal to 2, x y plus x z plus y z is equal to 4, and x y z is equal to 8. Notice that the numbers here are not random. We have something like a and then a squared and then a cubed. The original problem involved those parameters, but I just kind of changed it to make it numerical. So I'm going to be presenting two methods here. The first method is a little longer, but bear with me because we're going to be doing some interesting math here. So what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to be calculating some uh, expressions here. So let's go ahead and start with the first one. I'd like to take x plus y plus z and square it. And in this case, my goal is to get x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that's my goal. Let's go ahead and get that. So what does this give me? When you square 2, you're going to get 4. And x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus. Now, xy plus xz plus yz is equal to 4. We know that. So 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So we're adding an 8 to this, which means that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is supposed to be negative 4. Now, this should come as no surprise because the sum of squares of three numbers can be a negative if, if the numbers are not all real, right? I mean, if, if the numbers are real, obviously, they can't, be, they can't have a negative sum like this. But in this case, we're also dealing with some complex numbers. Okay, now, so I got this one. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more on this. So I'd like to use the cube. So let's go ahead and, uh, you know, just expand the formula. And this formula is actually pretty helpful because you're going to see that a lot in algebra. So it's always good to know these kinds of things. So it is x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz. I think we use this idea in other videos. You'll probably remember. But if you have a polynomial like this, this polynomial is divisible by x plus y plus z. And you can easily prove that by replacing x plus y plus z with 0 or x plus y with negative z or otherwise. So when we divide it by x plus y plus z or when we factor it, the other factor is just going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus xy minus xz minus yz. All right. So that's pretty long, but that's basically what it is. Now, what do we know? Well, here we do know that x plus y plus z is equal to 2. So this is 2. We do know the sum of the squares. We just calculated it. So that's a negative 4. And we're going to be subtracting another 4 from this. So what we get basically here is, and we also know that x, y, z is equal to 8. So that gives us a 24 there. So let's go ahead and write this down. x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 24 is equal to 2 times the quantity negative 4 minus 4 which is negative 8, and so I'm getting negative 16 on the right-hand side. If I add 24 to it, from here I should be getting x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 8. Now this is significant because we also know that the product is equal to 8, so we're going to put these two together in another form, and that is going to be the x plus y plus z quantity cubed. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now, of course, these numbers are special. That's why we're going to be getting this type of result. It's not always going to happen, of course, this nice. So what am I getting from here? Well, that, that's kind of like a very long expression. But in order to simplify this a little bit, I'm going to give you an identity that gives you this expression. That is equal to x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed plus 3 times the quantity x plus y times x plus z times y plus z. Now, you can prove this easily by expanding the left-hand side and then factoring the result. So what do we know about this? Well, first of all, notice that we have x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed is equal to 8. So this is 8. We also know that this is equal to 2. So if you cube the 2, you're going to get 8. So what is that supposed to mean? You have 8 equals 8 plus something else, which means that the something else is equal to 0. This is the beautiful part of this, that we do get a product of zero. So from zero product property, now I know you're probably saying something like, well, is this always going to work? Nope. If it's not equal to zero, then it's not going to work, obviously. But again, at the beginning, I said that these numbers are special, like a, a squared, and a cubed. All right, cool. So if it's the that's the case, it's always going to work. Now, what is that supposed to mean? I do have a product that's equal to zero. This means from zero product property that at least one of these factors must equal zero. 
Okay, so it doesn't really matter which one because we have some type of symmetry here. So I can safely say that, well, x, let x plus y is equal to, or let x plus y equal to zero. So what does that give us? Let's take a look at it. So if x plus y is equal to zero, we also know that x plus y plus z is equal to two. So from here, we immediately get that z is equal to two, right? So we got one of the solutions, great. But this also gives us a little bit more because we know that x, y, z is equal to eight. And from x plus y is equal to zero, we can safely say that y is equal to negative x. So if you go ahead and substitute that here, then we're going to be getting something interesting. And also knowing that z is equal to two, this gives us x, y is equal to four, and y can be written as negative x. Okay, great. So this gives us negative x squared is equal to four, and x squared is equal to negative four from here. Obviously, x is not a real number. We said it at the beginning that we're getting some interesting results here, which deals with complex numbers. Okay, so from here, we can write the x as either 2i or negative 2i. Obviously, these are the x values, but it also means that they are y values. So we can safely say that uh, they're just going to permute. You know, we can talk about all the permutations. But basically, one ordered pair that satisfies this is going to be like, because we said that z is equal to 2, right? So one of the ordered pairs is going to look like 2i, comma, negative 2i, comma, 2. And you can basically check that this satisfies the system. Now, in, instead of writing it as ordered pairs, because there's going to be, you know, quite a few of them, 3 factorial is 6, so why don't we just write the result as a set? That way we don't have to worry about the permutations and it'll be taken care of. So basically, I can say that as a set, the solution set x, y, z is equal to 2i, comma, negative 2i, comma, 2, which means that all these values are possible for x, y, and z. Okay, this is the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second solution method, and I think you will like both methods, or if you don't, please let me know in the comment section because I'd like to hear from you uh, what you think about each method. So, the second method is pretty interesting, and let me go ahead and rewrite my system so we can kind of refresh our memories. So we have this one, we have this one, which is equal to four, and again, remember, they're like a, a squared, and a cubed, so the product is equal to a cubed, which is eight, if a is equal to two. Great. So what am I going to use? Well, the second method is actually really cool because it uses what's called Vietas formulas. And I do have a separate video on Vietas formulas, a couple other videos. I'm going to link those in the description down below. All right. Cool. Now, what is that supposed to mean? So we're kind of looking at a cubic equation whose roots are x, y, z. And we do have the sum of the roots. We do have the the two-way products that are being added, like xy plus xz plus yz, and we also have the product of the roots. Well, this calls for Vieta. And from Vieta's formula, suppose we have an equation, and let's use a different variable not to get confused. So let's use t, for example. t it represents all the xyz values in this case. So the sum of the roots are going to go here. Remember, that's a negative b over a, and a is 1 in this case. So we're going to write, basically, the x plus y plus z here. So it's going to go like this. Maybe I should write the general equation first, and then I'm going to do the replacements. That'll give you a little, uh, you know, more ideas about how this works. So basically, if you have an equation, the cubic equation whose uh, roots are given like this, so with these relationships, then you can safely say that the equation, the equation that has these roots, looks like the following. So we're going to be putting the x plus y plus z here, multiplied by t squared, and that's going to have a negative sign. Plus, we're going to have the two-way products x, y, x, z, y, z here. And that's going to be multiplied by t, and it's going to be positive. And then finally, we're going to have the x, y, z as our co constant, and that's equal to zero. Great. So that's my equation. And let's go ahead and make those replacements. We know that, let's go ahead and use a different color here. So we know that x plus y plus z is equal to 2. So this gives me t cubed minus 2t squared plus 4t minus 8 is equal to 0. And guess what? This is factorable by grouping. That's what makes it so awesome. So I can write it as t squared times t minus 2 plus 4 times t minus 2, which brings us to t squared plus 4 times t minus 2 is equal to 0. And this means that from here, t is equal to 2, which means one of the roots is 2. And the second part comes from t squared plus 4 is equal to 0, 
which means t squared is equal to negative 4. And from here, we get t is equal to 2i or negative 2i. And again, you get basically all the possible solutions from Vieta's formulas. And this is the end of the second method. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I'll see you with another video at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.